Well, uh, I guess I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about the share icon, direct uploads to Amazon S3, the web starter kit, and more. Let's check it out. Well, first up is a blog post called Share, the icon that no one agrees on. Now, if you- I disagree with that. If you've used uh, Apple's iOS or Mac OS X, uh, Google Android, a Windows 8, or uh, been on any web pages, you might have seen that there's a bunch of different icons for the same thing, sharing something, whether that's over email or SMS or on a social network and so on. Nobody seems to agree on what this particular icon should look like. Now, a while back, there was actually a standard sort of being developed for what the share icon should look like. And I think Google Android adopted that particular one, at least from what I remember. But there's also now this open share icon, and I think there's one other one that's competing. But now these different operating systems have also implemented their own share icons. So across the board, they're all different. This is pretty fascinating sort of as a design discussion because it it's interesting how quickly we all settled on, say, the hamburger menu for slide out menus, but how- I get hungry every time you mention the hamburger menu. It's like, sure, I'd like a hamburger. But, you know, for something like sharing, that's so common, there's still not a standard for this or sort of a de facto icon. I would share a burger with you. I'd, I'd share a burger with you too. So, sounds delicious. It'd be nice. Yeah. Once in a while. Down here we have- it Doesn't have to be every weekend, just once in a while. Down here we have what's called the, the uploader icon in iOS 7. So you can click to say upload something or share it, which sort of corresponds to the download icon here in uh, pre-iOS 7 operating systems, there is the outgoing tray, so they sort of switched icons there. There's the three dots for Android, which sort of looks like this and so on. Anyway, really interesting article. Uh, doesn't feature any hamburgers at all. I'm sorry, Jason, but it's uh, pretty interesting. Hmm. Definitely well, worth a read. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Next up, we have a project called evaporate.js. Evaporate.js is a JavaScript library for directly uploading files to Amazon S3 from your web page. Now, this is a great, great library because it supports, it supports resumable uploads using the upload multi-part functionality. The reason that is so useful is because if you are uploading a thousand megabyte file or one gigabyte, as some people say, and you've only uploaded the first 900 megabytes, and then for some reason your network connection fails, normally you would have to restart the upload from the beginning. However, that is not so with Evaporate.js. It does the upload in small chunks and then can carry on from where it left off. It is super easy to include in your page. Just include the evaporate.js file. You also have to set up your S3 bucket with this configuration to allow uploads from other domains. There is an example application that is included, but we are not going to show that because we would have to enter our personal Amazon web server keys and the buckets, and I do not feel comfortable revealing that information on the show. Let's just put them out there. <laughs> Let's just get it all out in the open. <laughs> so um, basically, it's a it's a great, great plugin for uploading, very easy to use. Go on and check it out in the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us on iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show, and join us for one free month of Treehouse by going to teamtreehouse.com slash show. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is Google's Web Starter Kit. This goes along with their Web Fundamentals. It's a boilerplate and tooling for multi-device development. So you can download the kit right here. It's currently in beta. What does that get you? Well, there's a multi-device responsive boilerplate template, and it has a very high page speed insights performance score, so it's going to be very performant. That's really cool. 
There's cross-device synchronization. What? That's pretty amazing. Live browser reloading, SaaS support. They uh, report with PageSpeed Insights. Uh, there's even a built-in HTTP server. So it's pretty amazing. There's a lot of stuff going on here. We're not going to talk about all of them, but I do want to flip over to the documentation here, and then there should be a link right here, set up web starter kit, and then right here, pick a layout. You can pick between index.html and basic.html, and they're going to do two different things for you here. Index is good for a default starting point. It includes a slide out menu, and to choose it, all you have to do is remove the basic.html file, and then basic is more basic. It has no navigation, and it's very simple, but it's also responsive. So if we scroll down here, you can kind of see what this looks like. So here is that particular layout, index.html, and then here's what that slide out menu looks like on mobile devices. What kind of menu is that? I think it's a hamburger menu, Jason. Hmm. And it's called a slider? That's like a mini burger. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting hungrier with each, each story we do. Anyway, uh, that's about it. Check it out. It's called the Web Starter Kit. Very cool stuff. Yeah. One, uh, one thing to note on that, it's not meant to replace something like Bootstrap or Foundation. It's really supposed to be a starter kit, kind of showing you the bare minimum. It's actually more similar to HTML5 boilerplate. Ooh, H5BP. Yeah. OK. Next up, we have a book called JavaScript Allongé. This is a book on reading JavaScript, and it is completely free if you want to read it online. However, you could purchase the ebook if you wanted to. Uh, this is something, again, we're not going to get into everything because look at this large table of contents. There is a lot going on. And TLDR. At, yeah, look at that cup of coffee. That looks delicious. Something you would maybe want to eat after a burger. So um, this, is, this has just a, a lot of great info about JavaScript. And here is the reasoning the author wrote the book. It says there are plenty of good directions for writing JavaScript programs. And if you follow them without alteration or deviation, you'll be satisfied. But software is complex and has a lot of side effects, which is why you need to read this book. So anyway, check out the book. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. Uh, and when I say check it out, that doesn't imply you have to return it. You can just read it on the website. And, and you'll be fine. You don't it's need not, a library card. Yeah, it's not like a library. Nice. Next up is a blog post called What Every Front-End Developer Should Know About Web Page Rendering. Wow, that is a mouthful. Hamburger, maybe. Hmm. Could go for that. Yeah, sounds good. Basically, there are two fundamental things that I would like to point out, repaints and reflows. So a repaint is when a style changes that does not affect the element's position on a page. So for example, a change in background color, border color, visibility, so whether or not something is actually visible on the page. A reflow, however, is when something actually changes in the layout. And you have to reflow all of the elements, recalculate everything, and basically repaint the page. This is a lot more expensive, whereas repaints do have a little bit of a performance hit, but they're not as bad as a reflow. So those are the two kind of performance hits that can happen in rendering a web page. And here's a little walkthrough of how exactly a browser renders a web page. It's pretty helpful to know. But Five down steps. here, we also have how, uh, how to optimize this, uh, this repaints and reflows. Here we go. Practical advice on optimization. And there's a couple of helpful tips there, such as the ranking of selector specificity. Anyway, really cool article, very helpful, and very important to know if you are a front-end developer or a designer and you're trying to optimize the rendering performance of a web page, especially important for mobile devices. Yeah, a lot of great tips in there. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Odyssey. This is billed as a simple way for journalists, designers, and creators to weave interactive stories. What does that mean? I have no idea. Let's scroll down the page and see if it provides an example. 
Whoa. No, this is actually really cool. So just like you say, you pick a template, craft your story, and then you can tell your own story. Check this out though. They have examples over in the documentation. It provides a bunch of different options for creating sort of like the um, oh man. parallax scrolling. That's the word. Yeah. So if we head on over to the documentation, you can see it has a, a lot of different options for creating a parallax scrolling sort of effect. And it also allows you to weave together different multimedia. And you can do this in a version of Markdown. Now the elements that it allows you to create are maps. So you can take people on a literal odyssey through the world. And you can also add videos to it. Let's see if we can get their editor on here. There we go. Examples. Here is a list of examples making use of templates. And here we are. We see a map and there is some picking going on here. You can tell that because it says it. Here's an example of spinning. And you'll notice as we walk through the page, all of this behavior is being generated from that one markdown file and then being processed by Odyssey. This is a very cool project that will allow you to create these great visualizations with next to no code as long as you follow the markdown. Make sure to check it out in the show notes. Very nice stuff. Well, I am at Nick Arpia on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to try out Treehouse for free for 30 days, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. You want to go get a burger?